technology gives us the ability to create relationships in the supply chain, relationships between producers and consumers much more flexibly and rapidly. We're seeing it already in food production, in transport resources such as journeys in cars and parking spaces. Um, and we're seeing it in the, in the manufacture of custom goods. So the, the image on the bottom left is uh, taken from Shapeways, where you can 3D print pretty much anything that you like. And the cost of this technology is coming down. Um, at the same time, these marketplaces are transactional, and we've got interesting opportunities to affect the rate of exchange used in those transactions. Um, there's a, an alternative currency that's been in use in Switzerland for nearly 100 years now, the Weir, that's thought to have contributed to economic stability there. I suspect with someone from the LSE chair in the debate, we may have a, a comment on that. Um, five towns and cities in the UK uh, have their own local currencies now um, with similar intentions. And they're increasingly using um, advanced technology to support those currencies, such as the droplet smartphone payment system that's been created in, in Birmingham. These rates of exchange offer us the possibility to compare the complete cost of goods and services, the financial cost and their social and environmental implications, with dynamic, lo highly localized value to the participants, what it's worth to me now to have this service, rather than what it might be worth to me to have it in two weeks' time when I really need it. I think there's tremendous potential here to produce new information-based marketplaces that could support more sustainable city systems. But if they're such a good idea, why don't we have them ubiquitously already? And that comes down to something that's been mentioned by, by, the, other, by the other speakers. Um, where cities are making progress on this agenda, it's where they're coordinating the use of their public sector and private sector assets towards a co-created vision, towards a common set of goals and objectives. But in order to win that level of commitment, you don't only need the buy-in of the leaders and managers of those resources. You need the understanding of all of the stakeholders that they're accountable to, their employees, the electorate, their shareholders. To appeal to that tremendously broad set of interests, we need to, I think, to appeal to some common instincts amongst us all, a sense of narrative and our ability to empathize, rather than focus on the financial efficiencies created by smart infrastructures. And if we do that, we may not get very far because smart ideas cut across silos, so those who realize the benefits may not be those who are asked to make the investment in the first case. Um, instead, we should be concentrating on the social and personal and community value that can be created when people people can, can afford to buy better food, where they can afford to heat their homes properly in winter, when they have access to affordable transport to places of, of employment. 